Hi everyone, my name is Roberta Eldridge and this is going to be my first YouTube video that I'm making and what I'm hoping to do is to be able to make this little project, a little ATC and I'm going to use some Nina paper so I've already cut it down so it is ATC size but this paper is not thick enough for an ATC so on the back I used an extra piece of paper that I found at the doctor it was for the coupon you get this long sheet of paper and it has a little coupon to uh, get your prescriptions cheap or free and uh, so I just used a section of it but because it is glossy it doesn't uh, hold things very well. Sometimes when I paint it, it's actually slid off or scratched off. And so, to give it a little bit of tooth, I'm trying to sand off with a little sanding block. Sand it off a little bit. You got to use uh, like a, a mask or something so you're not breathing it in if you have breathing problems or asthma. And then after it's been sanded off, you just wipe it off really good to get any of the dust off. And then set it aside. And so for this one, I'm using a piece of Punchinella. I bought some online a while back, so I have a roll of it. And instead of just always doing it with the little dots, I cut a couple pieces off cross them over each other and then I tape the edges of it so it has a finished edge so when I put it away the little pokey ends of it aren't getting caught on everything and I use this to do my stenciling and I don't do the whole thing I do a little here a little there a little there I just move it around and it's okay if it's not perfect that's part of the mixed media look so I have the stencil. I am using Apple Barrel Paints. This is Diva Pink, Purple Iris, and Cobalt Blue. And I'm also using the Target brand acrylic paint, and this one is the gold color. I'm using Stampin' Up! Chocolate Chip Ink. Memento Black, and I have a little angel stamp that I'm going to use. I'll also be using a black Sharpie, which is what I use to outline. And makeup sponges for application. And for the edging, I used a little bit of the Diva Pink and daubed it all around the edges and then I used it like the Tim Holtz little blender and just blend it around and of course it's not perfect and again that's the look that that I was going for so to begin I'm just going to put this over here and the first thing that I'm going to do is pull out one of my uh, lemon bag stencils that I made and I am notorious for looking at everything as a way is it something I can use to stamp or stencil with and so with a lemon bag stencil I used a bit of lemon bag that has a solid plastic on one side and then it has this texture of the plastic lines on the other. I just kind of doubled it over. Pull out my ink. And I just stick it in there and just wherever, all over. And you could do a double tap. You don't have to always get fresh ink so it doesn't have to be dark everywhere. And then I just try to make sure I get the rest of it off. So the ink isn't wasted. And also that my stamp is clean. And whatever I can't get off that way, 
I use my trusty towel. This towel has only been hand washed in the year that I've used it. <laughs> it is full of acrylic paint, glue, Mod Podge, and everything else. And I just hand wash it, wring it out really good, and let it dry and just keep using it. I don't use paper towels generally for any of that kind of stuff. Okay, let me put the ink away. The next thing is to get the, the colors of ink. And I'm going to be using a little bit of the purple. And a little bit of the pink. The other thing that I uh, forgot to mention is that any extra ink that is left here or even on my sponge I always make sure to put it in my composition book of my extra paint. Now I've been doing this for a while so I've gotten a little bit better at it. I kind of choose the page and the way that I'm going to put the ink on and try to make sure the color and whatever I'm putting on is going to be somewhat complementary. Now this is just when this has extra ink and I just use a sponge and daub it on. This isn't anything special. But I always make sure to use it. And on these wet pages, this is because I have taken the sponge and daubed it in a little bit of water to rehydrate the ink that's in here and sponge it all over or even swipe it or try to make little designs with the extra ink so that it is used. So that's what I'm also going to be doing with any extra ink that I have here. Okay, for this one I'm using this stencil. I'm kind of curling this up and trying just to get a little bit of both the pink and the purple and dab it off because you don't want it real strong as you're coming through because then it's just going to bleed and not be pretty. And then you just go all over randomly and if you need to reload just come back You pick up some more. And this isn't anything that you want to have exact. You want to make this as imperfect as you can because that's what gives it its little bit of charm. I'm just looking for little spaces that don't have anything yet and then adding some to it. Alrighty, let me get a little bit on that corner. Now I still have a lot more ink. They've already been mixed. I don't want to waste it. So I'm going to open up my journal and I'm going to add it in here. And again, I don't want to uh, mess up the stencil, so I'm just going to daub it in so that it doesn't bleed through. I like that it's imperfect. And as it gets closer to the end of what is left inside of the sponge, I just press a little bit harder and then I get fainter shades of the color. The other thing that I like to do is just to go to a whole new page and then just do some swipes of the paint and get a whole new look that way as well.
And I just keep adding. It doesn't matter where or how I'm doing it. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not wasting it. And it doesn't look like anything special at all right now. But over time, as I add different colors and use different stencils or inks, I get a whole nother look. All right, now I'm going to hydrate this with a little bit of water. And I'm going to go in and add some more. As you see, I've now gotten some more paint out of here. And so now I'm just going to keep doing this. Now this is how I've gotten some pretty awesome looking excess paint papers which are great for use in mixed media. Okay, all right now I'm just going to go ahead and put this in a cup. Put this off to the side, let it dry. Pull my paper back. And now what I want to do is I want to do the blue. So I'm going to take a small amount of the cobalt blue, and I generally try to get as small as a bit as I can. So I really don't need that much. A little bit goes a long way, especially if you're working on an ATC. And I'm going to be using this lemon bag mesh. And I've written on it that this is the top this is a bottom, so I'm always applying ink from the same side, so the one side is generally clean. And again, just randomly, going to pick up a little bit of, well, I'm not randomly picking it up, I'm picking up ink and daubing it inside, but I'm going to randomly put little bits of this blue. Some I'm going to make them a little darker, some are going to be a little lighter. I'm also going to switch the direction of this mesh to give it a different look each time I apply it. And that's enough because this really doesn't need very much. Again, I have all this extra ink. And for now, I'm going to try to pick up the little bit that's on there. Put it back in. Pick up the rest of it. Get off my finger. Use a stencil. Come back to this other page I was working on. Randomly add little bits. And as you can see already, the blue ink is already running out. All I need to do is add a little bit of water. Hydrate. And I get it a little bit more ink out of that. Okay. Okay. The next step is deciding where that we're going to put the uh, the angel. Use the black memento. Ink it up pretty good. And because I'm going to be going over the lines with a Sharpie, I really am not worrying about uh, the lines being solid black with the ink. So if it's imperfect, I'm okay with that. And I think I want this to go in this direction. I'm going to put the angel closer up to the top this time. And now it's time to paint the angel. And let me get the yellow. I use yellow for her hair. Paint
pink for her dress and then the gold. So let me get the paintbrush. I'm going to start with the yellow for her hair. And I'm just going to use the ink out of the cap if it's still wet. And if not, then I just turn the bottle on the side. Get a little bit out of there. And it's okay if it's kind of translucent where you can still see some of the design in the back of the paper, the stenciling, that's okay. Alrighty, that's that little bit for the yellow. Wash out the brush. And I forgot that I also used the flesh tone. Sunkiss Peach. This is for her face, her hands, and her legs. And her neck. Her neck is this little skinny, skinny line. Okay, that's all for the flesh, although I think I'll just go over her face just a little bit more. And then wash that out. Pink for her dress. And I just go over where the buttons are because I can still see the lines to know where to put the three bits of the gold to make the buttons. And going out of the line uh, is not a problem because you're going to outline with black sharpie. So of course it doesn't have to be perfect. And mixed media generally is art that is very imperfect which gives it the sense of whimsy that people like it for I really had fun when I made this uh, little ATC last night and this is my first YouTube video, so I really hope it turns out nice. Been wanting to make videos of how I craft for quite some time. I just haven't been able to, so I'm excited to try it. Okay. Wash out the pink. And now for the gold for the wings and the buttons and the halo. Now this paint comes in a totally different container, so I use it different than I do the other one. And then for the wings, I make sure it's not just like one flat layer. I go over and paint the first initial layer. Then I go back and I add globs of the paint.
paint and then I use my paintbrush to uh, touch it and then pick it up to kind of give it some texture so it's not flat looking. So I'm basically daubing the ink which gives it a little texture because little bits of it start to dry so as you're picking it up kind of gives it some peaks like uh, a meringue. And I like the way it looks and I like the way it feels. I'm a tactile person so I like the way things feel and I had uh, a friend who was blind and uh, she couldn't see the cards I was making or the ones that she eventually started making but she could feel them and that was her favorite part when she would come over to see the cards that I made she would see them by touching so I always try to make my cards somewhat tactile so that people who are blind or people like myself who like things with texture are able to enjoy the way that they feel. And again, if you're going out of the lines, it's not a problem because Again, you're going to go over the outline with a Sharpie to give it some more definition. Now I'm putting three dollops of the paint to give it the buttons. And now the last part before the Sharpie is to do the halo. Excuse me. put the rest of this paint away. And I have gold paint. So I want to add it into my book of excess paint. And looking for a page that I would want to add gold to. Just find a page and then just randomly just put down the excess of the gold paint even if at a later date I stencil or ink over this or use the paper to die cut and it doesn't actually get used and then last I just kind of squiggle or swirl to get the last little remnants off it'll be utilized some way or another Wash the brush off so it's clean. Now we have to let this dry, but I can go ahead and do the border with the, the Diva Pink ink. It's the same ink we used before. Just use, actually, instead of putting it down, I'm just going to uh, pick some up this way. Sometimes you can kind of control it better, and then other times you get a blob, so. And then I'm going to pounce it so it goes in the sponge so it's not an overabundance. And then I'm just going to use it like a person would if they were inking. And you get that same edge that we like so much, that distressed look. And I always kind of go in a little bit, especially on the corners, get a little bit more extra ink. I have to be careful as I'm doing this because this is not dry and I don't want to mess it up. this anyway.
And I like the little distressed look. It kind of adds to it. Now I'm going to do just like uh, you do with the, uh, the sponges where you just kind of go around. Just kind of add a little bit more of a, an edge to it. And of course, like I said, I'm being careful because it's not dry. Gently picking up just the smallest amount so it's not too much. And then going back over it and trying to even it out. This bit of ink is going to end up back in here. I'm just going to pick it up. I don't mind using it for the excess paint, but when I can just put it back in here and use it for a project I really want, and then just use the excess paint this way, I just hydrate this with some water, and then I dab it on an empty page so I get a pink background or I hydrate it and put splotches of pink on a picture that I like. So I'm going to put this to the side, use it later. I cannot finish this right now because it's still wet. And as we all know, if you use a Sharpie on wet ink, it ends up uh, ruining the nib of the Sharpie and it's no longer good. And I used to try to scratch it gently with uh, an emery board to get that glue off or the, the acrylic binder. And uh, it ended up ruining the, the marker and then the ink would just kind of come out at, at will instead of coming out when you use it. Anyway, that's how you do this one. When it's dried, just go over the lines with a Sharpie. And then you put glue on the backing that you're going to use. And then put it on and make sure it gets adhered. And then just finish cutting it with a, um, a trimmer or scissors. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you like it or not. Just leave a comment. And subscribe if you're interested in seeing anything else that I... Um, come up with that I want to show you guys. You have a blessed day. Thank you. Hello everyone. This is Roberta Eldridge again and uh, I was going to finish the little angel ATC that we were working on yesterday. I've already glued it to the back so now I'm just going to trim it so that I can uh, outline it with the Sharpie. It's also going to um, add another color of ink to the outer edge and possibly do a little bit of doodling on the edge to, to uh, give it a little more punch. And then also add a couple of uh, gems or these little pretty sparkly dots. Let's get that a better cut. There we go. And it didn't cut all the way through, so let's try it again. I need to get me a really good pair of long scissors because then I'd be able to cut in one length instead of doing a little bit, get the jagged edges. Okay. 
This is the one that I did yesterday, and this is the one I'd done before. And so right now we need to get the uh, Sharpie and outline this one. For the halo, the uh, gold paint goes on the inside and the outside, but I'm just going to go on the line of the halo. And then also just outline the rest of it. And if there's any lines that I don't like or that I want to accent or accentuate, I could just go ahead and add those at this time. And this is the uh, extra fine Sharpie, so it has a much skinnier nib, so you get a much finer line. You wouldn't want to use the really thick one, it'd be too much. And my nib is... Uh, Not wanting to do the writing, it's like gotten gunky, so I'm gonna scribble it off and see if that helps. I'd really uh, like to be able to get some Posca pens because those seem to really be the best for this kind of art work. Didn't have as many problems with the nib getting stuck, not working. And today, <laughs> my video should be right side up. I have the camera in a, the right position this time so it should be recording right side up which actually that one yesterday wasn't too bad it wasn't as bad as I had feared and then I just need to give her her little eyes there's no nose or mouth on this stamp it's just the eyes okay put the cap on the sharpie I was going to use some of this it's uh, Studio G. It's like an eggplant purple color. I just wanted to go around, give it another color to finish, and also color off these white edges so it doesn't look so stark. This purple complements the colors that are already on it. So I'm going to go ahead and do it to this first one as well. Now, the Studio G ink pads I got over at Joann's probably two years, almost three years ago. And all the inks were good except for the one that had the silver and the gold. They come in packs of three. I don't remember what the other color was, but it had silver and gold. And uh, those were already dry. And nothing I did would uh, rehydrate them, whether I added water or alcohol. I think with the gold, I got one stamping. Same with the silver. So I was quite disappointed with those. But these have always been nice and juicy and work really well. And they're like an off-brand, so they're maybe like a dollar a piece when you uh, use a coupon at Joann's, get your 50% off, they end up being about a dollar each. Now I want to try with the uh, Sharpie to kind of go around just a little squiggly. See, it's not writing, so I'm going to go to the other Sharpie. And it's okay if I use a thicker point. This one is a fine point. 
That one is the extra fine. But this one will be okay for doing the doodling on the outside. And I just want to go around and make a squiggly line all the way around. And then you could just add little lines or hatches or squiggles in different places if you like, just to make it a little more interesting. On this one I think I'll just go around twice, so I'll just go ahead and do the first. And then follow through with the second one. Kind of try to cross the lines. And on this one I'm just going to put some dots so it's a little different. And I'll see if I can find my white gel pen. Go over it. So the white gel pen can accent the white or the black dots that I'm adding on. I'm going to make them a little bigger so the white will show up better. Sometimes when you're doodling at the moment it doesn't look so good. Sometimes at the end it looks pretty nice. Other times not so nice and then you just paint over it, do something else. Or cut out a focal piece if the focal piece is still nice. Create something else with it. I used to be afraid of ruining stuff and it kind of stopped me from doing much creating and I don't like not creating so I trying to make a point of not being afraid of making mistakes, remembering that I can always redo stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and use my tool here and pick up some gems and put them on. Now one of them I want to put the pink ones and on the other one I want to put some of the purple ones. So this one I'm going to add the pink ones. I think I'll put them down here. And they say to do things in threes, that it's more attractive to the eye when it's looking at artwork. So three it is. And I love these. I wish I knew uh, where I could buy some more of these. These are my absolute favorite little sparkly thing to add on to a card or an ATC. I'm going to add, I think I'll add the lighter pink instead because the purple is a totally different color. This video tonight is going to be short because I'm just going to be finishing this one off just so it's not left incomplete. So everybody can see what it looks like when it's finished. And then I also need to use a couple of these for uh, trades in my ATC uh, Facebook group where we trade ATCs. I owe a couple of ladies some trades. Okay, here we go. They both have been finished. They have the edge or the 
extra backing to make them thicker, more durable. I've added another color, the purple, to the edge to finish it. I've done some doodling. And then I have this. And I don't have any text printed out to, um, to add something, but I, I do have some scraps of paper that have some words. So I'm going to turn the camera off, go get those, so that I can add something on here, a little sentiment. Okay, everybody, I'm back. I found a uh, couple of sentiments. One is um, love with total abandon. And the other one is celebrate yourself. I'm going to pop them up with some uh, 3D dimensional foam. Or not 3D, but dimensional foam. After I ink them. And I'm just going to ink the edges. And it'll coordinate because I use this color already for the uh, ATC. And purple is my absolute favorite color. It's a color of royalty, which I think of when I read the Bible and I read about the Old Testament and the um, the curtains that were put inside the temple. Purple was uh, one of the colors that was a favorite color or a color of honor that was used in there to denote royalty. So I just love the color, all the different shades. Instead of having this whole big roll, I take some and I wrap it on the, uh, this is the center of a roll of tape from when I was a cashier at Meyer, And uh, I kept these, so I have them. And they make really good uh, stenciling or stamping, depending on how you want to call it. Just dip it in ink. And depending on what part of the ridges are sticking up, you get a similar shape, but not 100%. It makes a really interesting effect on your backgrounds. The hard part for me is always trying to get this tape off. Surprisingly, it's coming off really easy this time, but usually I use a straight pen to get it off. There we go. One of them that has a sentiment. Looks a lot more finished than when it's just plain. Now let's do the one that's called Celebrate Yourself. This tape is too big, so I have to cut it down. And I save all the little extra bits. I can use them on other projects. I just keep them stuck on here. See if this one will come off as easy as the other one. Yep. And this one I'm going to put up at the top. There we go. And we have uh, the two ATCs. This is the one that I did first. And then this is the one that I worked on yesterday and finished tonight. I hope you guys uh, had fun watching and I uh, am hoping to do a lot better. There's a lot to learn in making your own 
video to put up on YouTube. And so uh, I'm studying it, the one that I did, and I'll study this one and see what I need to do to, to make it more user-friendly and enjoyable to watch and also, also more informative because I like to teach things. You guys have a great evening. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to. Thank you. God bless.